I heard it that time. Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, and welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, I am a vlogger, I broadcast out of the UK. Um, born in the UK, Jamaican parents, I lived in the, U in the US of A for a while, lived in Africa for a while, and I vlog on various things that I think might be of interest. Today I'm talking about the new app that is being tested in the Isle of Wight today. And this app is supposed to determine whether or not we can be eased out of lockdown. It's conditional. If we want to come out of lockdown, we need to download the app. The irony is, is that this app is supposed to track and trace everybody you've been in contact. So basically, you download the app on your phone and anyone you've been in contact with, whether it's somebody on the train, somebody at your workplace, and if they happen to be diagnosed with the coronavirus, that app will link to your app on your phone via Bluetooth and it will notify you that you've been in contact with somebody who's got the coronavirus and therefore you must go into isolation and all sorts. Well, basically go into isolation and go and get tested to make sure you don't have it. Now, this app, it depends, of course, number one, your, you having your phone on you, number two, your phone being on, number three, that you've activated the app, number four, you have a full battery, number five, you have your Bluetooth on. And that applies to everybody around you. If all of those features are not functioning, it's not going to work. So, the end of the lockdown comes with conditions. Tracking technology, it's called Contact and Trace Program. COVID-19 app. Now, I've told you before, that stands C-O-V-I-D, stands for Certificate of Vaccination ID. And, use, and it's using modern technology to track you and trace everyone you've been in contact with, whether you know them or not. So that's like if you're sitting on, sitting on a train, you've gone to a supermarket, somebody behind you, somebody in front of you, maybe the um, person at the desk, although the person who, the tiller, is not going to have their phone on, I would think, or well, if they have their phone on, it's not going to necessarily have the tracker on. And it's going to, if you go to a hotel, it's going to pick up the... So it, it, it doesn't make any sense. I don't, Number one, how can it work when we're supposed to be on lockdown? <clears throat> now, this is supposed to end lockdown. When you download this app, it's supposed to end lockdown. But if you're not interacting with anyone, and if you're locked up, as I like to call it, and you're not allowed, and you're, and you're under house arrest, how the hell are you going to be interacting with people for, these, for this app to pick up the data? And also, it relies, like I said, on everybody having the app and having it on. Now, you go to like a supermarket, they're going to be busy, or if you go to um, B&Q or one of those homeware shops, and they're helping you um, with something you want on, on the shelf. You're close enough to them, aren't you? But does that mean they're going to have their phone on? Maybe they're not allowed to have their phone on while they're working. Most places you go to, especially in warehouses and, and factories, they're not allowed to have their phones. So what is the point? How is this effective? So it doesn't, anything that doesn't make sense to me, I get a bit sceptical about because it seems to be a bit back to front. What they should be doing is saying, okay, we are going to end lockdown, but the condition is you all have this app so we can track the virus. Then that would make sense. But I don't see how you can end the lockdown and expect this app to work. 
So it's um, allegedly being marketed as groundbreaking technology combined with heroic frontline health and safety and social care features. Big deal. It uses Bluetooth and is meant to be unconnected with GPS tracking because, you know, people are saying, well, it's going to track everywhere I go. I mean, whether it has GPS tracking or not is irrelevant. The fact that it knows where you where you're sitting, who you've been in contact with, there's something within it that's going to tell the other app or the COVID-19 app where you are, because it's supposed to know who you've spoken to for how long and where it was. So if it doesn't have a GPS app, it has something. Mind you, the Bluetooth app can connect information. It can pass on information without necessarily having GPS. But there again, what's supposed to happen is, it's a bit complicated. What's supposed to happen is, is that when you download the app, it's supposed to have a series of keys. And then when you're close to somebody, all of the apps have a series of keys. And then when you're close to somebody, when you have that Bluetooth on, those keys are supposed to somehow interface. And then when, if you're diagnosed with um, the coronavirus, I don't know if you tell the app that you've got coronavirus and it then notifies everybody who you've been in contact with and then the key matches and then they're notified that they have to self-isolate and um, go and get tested. That's how it's supposed to work in simple terms, something like that. So um, I thought it went through your contact list. That's what I thought. And um, I started deleting all my contacts. So I'm thinking, I don't even know half of these people, you know. They're just acquaintances or people I know through DJing or writing or artistry, whatever it is. But I don't know them personally. So I started deleting contacts only to find it doesn't work that way. It's not that it goes through your contact list, although it could, I guess. But it goes, it, it's more or less who you are in contact with physically. That's the way I understand it. So the app is designed for participants, but I understand it's going to be another mandatory. So not only are the vaccinations mandatory, but also um, this this um, COVID app, this COVID app, and the two of them are linked because remember it's called certificate vaccination. That's what the app is called. The COVID nineteen is called certificate of vaccination. So it's going to be linked at some point. So that when you have the vaccination, it's linked and it will be recorded on the COVID app. So they're, they're trying to introduce the COVID app at the moment under this guise of, oh, you know, we've got to track everybody. And to be honest, it's quite a good idea. It's quite a good idea because in a sense, but that is only if they were allowing everybody to go back or the business was, were to go, go back to work. That would be different. But they're saying, oh, you can't go out. You can't. We can't stop this lockdown until you've got the app downloaded. It doesn't make any sense. Not, not unless what they're saying is when you down, when everybody's downloaded the app, then we're going to lift the lockdown and then we're going to let you all out. Like we're out of bloody prison. Maybe that's what they mean. Ah. <sighs> So, supposing you don't have a modern phone, that's another obstacle. Not everybody's got the latest phone. And so what then? Are they going to start selling phones really, really cheap so everybody can have a modern phone, so everybody can um, download the app? Or is this app compatible with the old phones? I know with WhatsApp, um, people couldn't get WhatsApp the other day if your phone was older than, I think, 10 years. Now, I know a lot of people, they don't like all this new fandangled technology. So they've got some weird old phones. And also what's interesting is in certain organizations, 
we've got the really old fashioned Nokia. You know those little ones you can't even, you don't have no WhatsApp, you can't do nothing on them. That's another thing. What about all those people in the health service and they would need it more than anyone else? Who've got those old phones, those old Nokia phones from goodness knows when. As far as they're concerned, the organisation is just used to make calls. You don't, it's not for any social networking or anything like that. It's just a work phone. And as a work phone, it's really, really old. So that wouldn't work. The app on that type of phone, you can guarantee it won't work. So I don't know if they've looked into all of that. People, not everybody having an updated phone. I mean, probably they've got a way around it. I don't know. So it's meant to track and slow down the outbreak. And of course, people are worried about privacy issues and whether or not they're being targeted for advertising. It's bad enough. Um, you know, opening up your phone and trying to go on something, no matter where you go, you try to look at a newspaper article, you try to look at something on eBay, whether it's Amazon, wherever you go is riddled with adverts. And it's so annoying. So what is this? what does this mean? Is it, is it going to be worse? I mean, they're saying, oh, no, it's not going to. But of course, it's not a perfect app. They have, there's always a disclaimer, isn't there? Oh, it's not a perfected. So, yeah, so because it's not perfected, something's going to squeeze out. And they say, oh, well, we did tell you it hasn't been perfected yet. I mean, they're giving you a free app. And any time you get something free, you know, there's a, there's a catch to it. It's just like with WhatsApp. The catch with WhatsApp was that you could call, make international calls free of charge. When could you ever do that? That's why everybody started downloading WhatsApp. I mean, I don't even think people call so much abroad now. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But that's what moked everybody in. And that's why they didn't want to change that part too much. Because people were getting something for free. But what is the penalty now? Penalty now is that they're stripping you away bit by bit of all those privileges. Now they've got your information. Now you can only transfer one dege dege text if, um, if, if it's been um, used five times before. So I don't even know why we're even worried. I mean, talking about privacy issues and all that, oh, why should we be really worried? They have all our data anyway. You know, people are saying, oh, I don't want my data. I don't want to have my data. They've got your bloody data. They know everything about you. So what difference does it make? If you're doing something on the sly now, if you have a little woman on the sly or you have your little side piece for you girls, you have your side piece on the side, maybe you don't want, maybe you don't want anybody to know that's what you're doing. But to be honest, they know what you're doing anyway. And I understand even when you've got your location off, Google still tracks you. So I don't have my location on, and sometimes you have to turn it on. It don't make no difference. They know where we're there. They know where I am. And so that's what I mean. You know, sometimes you fight. You fight the system. And you try to fight and say, okay, I don't want them to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to use Facebook. I'm not going to use... I mean, Facebook, that probably is quite a good idea. But the fact of the matter is... You've been on Facebook for goodness knows how long. They've got what they want from you already. So if you decide now, oh, I don't want to be on Facebook, I'm going to end my account. What's that going to do? They've already got your information. They already know who you are, what you like from what you don't like. So I'm not saying I agree with all of this, you know. I'm just saying, you know, what? I don't even want to say what is the point because it sounds like a defeatist attitude. But, you know, these people, these systems have your information already, most of it. So what this is doing now, it's actually, it's, well, I don't even see how it can work really because, like I said, it depends on so many factors for it to be effective. 
but it's a good excuse for people to track. I mean, just think, okay, so they're using the COVID um, thing now as an excuse. But okay, COVID passes. And, um, you know, it tell, tells them everyone you've been in contact with. I mean, do you really want to know? I don't know how important it is. I don't know how important it is to you. Do you want the system to know everybody you've been in contact with? You know what it might be good at? Solving murders. That would be good, wouldn't it? Can you imagine if it turned out to be one of these um, apps that could actually solve a murder? Because, you know, supposing, you know, these, these people, well, I guess they would have to have an app on them as well. That is the problem. And if they're going to commit a murder, they'll probably switch their phone off. So maybe it won't work. (laughs) Ah, my head's gone way away. Anyway, there's two options um, for what they're thinking about using. So one is powered by Google and Apple. Their app or platform is uses application programming interface which lets them interface with the government systems and it kind of goes out all over the place. Some kind of computer technology business. And it lets um, it lets the system know who you've been in contact with or in close proximity to, like in the train, McDonald's, hotel, receptionist, bus, supermarket. It will then notify the person if you've subsequently discovered you've been infected. And I think it's got like a 14 day um, timetable where within 14 days it's kind of active and then it kind of shuts down after 14 days because I guess after 14 days you should know whether or not you have the coronavirus. I'm pretty sure I saw somewhere it's got a time frame. Okay, so, and then, um, but there again, and I found another thing, why it might not work when you're on the underground. Does Bluetooth work when you're on the, on the underground? I know sometimes when I'm on the underground, I don't have no service at all. So I don't know if Bluetooth works when you're on the underground. And if you're under the underground and they're saying, oh, they can tell when you're on a train who you're next to and who you're in close proximity with. Does that mean if you're on the underground, It won't work. And once um, it knows that you've got the coronavirus, it will then notify everyone you've been in close proximity to and tell them to go and test and isolate themselves. Because they've been in close proximity to someone who's been infected. So you don't have to do anything. The app does it. Because can you imagine, you find out you've got the coronavirus and you're thinking, oh, my God, who have I? Well, I don't like I said, I don't know how it works when we're on lockdown. But supposing, okay, we're still allowed to go to the shops, aren't we? So suppose you go to the shop and then um, I don't know who gives it to you or some you give it to someone. And you're trying to think, bloody hell, who was I in contact with? That's what that does. You don't even have to think about who you were in contact with or who you stood close to because it will notify everybody you've been in close proximity to that they've been in close proximity to someone who's got the virus and they need to be checked and they need to be isolated. So um, the app will also be used to give other health warnings like spread of STIs. I was just thinking to myself, when has there ever been a spread of STIs, you know, sexually transmitted diseases? When has there ever been a spread of that? I mean, apart from AIDS, but that wasn't really a spread, was it? The app compiles a list of everyone you have been in contact with, albeit that you're supposed to be on lockdown. Like And it says, like, your gym, trainer, colleagues, friends, family members, and even people you don't know. So I can only assume that... Did I put it on? 
One sec. Oh yeah, can I call you back in 10 minutes? Hello? Anyway, sorry about that. Um, so you don't have anything yet, does it? That complies, okay. The COVID app tracks where we were, who we've spoken to, when, and who we've sat next to, etc., etc., etc. So the phone exchanges data with everyone you came in contact with, and that must drain the battery because it, you, it, it works in the background. You know, every time you come in close proximity to someone, it, it the app is activated. And so that means it has to be on all the time. That means your Bluetooth has to be on all the time. That means your battery gets drained. If your battery gets drained, it could all be dead. And if it dies, it's not going to do the job it's meant to do. So I wonder what they I wonder if they thought about that. Probably have. I don't know. I don't know. The app relies on a battery being active, the phone being on, the phone being carried by all participants, Bluetooth being on, and the app being activated. Apple and Google's exposure and notification um, API key matches, but this has been outdone by the NHSX model. So Apple and Google have one model for the track and trace, and NHS also have a model for track and trace. But it looks like the government's going to go with the NHS model. Now, the NHSX model also uses Bluetooth to track connections you have been in contact with, but also uses a centralized model, which means, as I understand it, it's everything is kind of all the information, all the data comes back to a central database. When someone is diagnosed with COVID-19, the NHS database will send notifications to everyone they may have infected without realising it. The centralised system could be used to track individuals and, the social, and their social interactions, and it stores that information. It's a bit like facial recognition. It takes the photographs of you, videos, and it just stores it in some central police station, some central database in the police station. This would be something similar, I would imagine. The NHS wakes up on the device when it senses, in quotes, another user is close by. And then the Bluetooth, and then it Bluetooths over the key and there it remains until either it is it is diagnosed with COVID-19 and then a kind of key matching occurs and that's what happens, roughly speaking. I mean, it's all much more technical than that, but that's just like the basic, that's all you basically need to know. Um, the testing starts in the Isle of Wight as of today. Um, the source is TDLR. That's where I got the information from. And yeah, like I said, I'm not quite sure how it works if we're on lockdown and who we're in contact with, but what do you know? Sometimes they say these things, they haven't really given it much thought. They think the whole we have chocolate and we don't have no sense and we're not going to put two and two together and make five. And, um, yeah, so, yes, a lot of people are worried or oh, they're not going to download it on their phones and they don't want people knowing their business and they don't want anybody tracking their information. And I'm just like, please, it's already track, love. You're trapped from the moment you wake up. Why do you think you get all those adverts? You're already trapped from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed. Even when your phone is off, you're still being trapped. 
And sometimes they you get this message. What does it say? I get some weird messages, you know. But oh, um, can you switch your phone on? So you can you turn on your Wi-Fi so I can download whatever, whatever. So that's all I've got to say for now. I hope you found this information useful. That's all. Bye bye.